All right, hands on challenge time, guys. Create a contact task factory. Okay. This one is a bit tricky. You have to read the instructions carefully. First off, create an Apex class that returns a list of contacts based on two incoming parameters. One, for the number of contacts to generate and the other for the last name. Okay, that's pretty much the shell, the method. The list should not be inserted into the system. So don't create any records because we are doing a test, okay? Only return. The first name should be dynamically generated and should be unique for each contact record in the list. Okay. The Apex class must be called random contact factory and be in the public scope. Let's start. Okay, this is the previous one. I'm going to make this smaller and close everything we got here. Well, this is an example we have. Maybe we can keep this so I can just refer to this file new apex class random contact factory okay so public class random factory but if we read the instruction the apex class should not should not use at is test annotation so we won't be using at is test like on the example before we won't be using. Okay. So let's go back here. The Apex class must have public static method called generate random contact. Okay. Or generate random contacts. Also without at test method annotation. So let's create that method for now. It's going to accept two parameters. The first one, uh, what was it again? One for the number of contacts to generate and then the, the last name, okay? So I'm going to go here. So public static list of contact, okay? That's the method. It's a public method. Static list, if it's written list of contact tag and the name of it is generate random contacts do that but we want to pass two parameters the first one is an integer which is a number um, num of contacts and then a string last name okay we have a shell. Now I'm going to just save this for now. Oopsie. Houston, we got a problem because we have no return. Ha. Huh. Okay, let's leave it for now and we'll flip back to the trail. The generate random contacts method must accept an integer as the first parameter, which we did, and a string as the second parameter. The first one controls the number of contacts being generated. The second is the name or the last name of the contacts generated. Okay. So the generate random contacts method should have a return type of list of contact. Got it? The generate random contacts method must be capable of consistently generating contacts with unique first names. So for example, it's going to be test one, test two, test three. And then lastly, it should not insert the contact records into the database. Okay, we got what we need. Um, let's start building. So now we are going to create um, a list. Okay, instantiate a list like on our example over here. A list of account. We're going to say a list of contacts. I'm just going to copy that. 
boom list of contact contacts new list of contact okay we have a list now we want to start um, creating new contacts let's refer it again to the previous um, three uh, example here so I'm gonna copy this okay copy this guy bam make it pretty shift tab so for integer I num of contacts here right not now not number of accounts I plus plus we create a new contact contact C new contact all right so the name or the first name of it first name equals test space I so test one test two test three test four right and then the last name of the contacts would be this guy here, right? And then this is the list name, not ACCTS, contacts.adc, right? And then return. We do not want to insert, so we do not want to do this. We do not want to insert the contacts, but we only want to return the contacts, okay? Missing, oh yeah, missing semicolon. And that's pretty much it. I think that's all. So, we create a um, class. There is no at is test here, so we can't run a test because this is a factory, right? Because this is not uh, a test class. So it has a public static method called generate random contacts, which is returning a list of contact. And it's accepting two parameters. First, the number of contacts to generate. Second, the name, the last name of the contacts. And then it has to um, make the first name test one, test two, test whatever number is generated there, all right? So the list, we first create the contacts list to, to as a bucket or a list to actually put all these contacts into this list here. A list of contact, name it contacts, plural, equals instantiate new list of contact, all right? And then we're gonna loop for integer i from zero until i less than, the number of contacts pass here pass there plus plus you keep incrementing it and then you basically create a, a new contact for each loop and then add that to the list here and then finally you return without inserting it well you can run a test because this is not a test right you can actually debug it let's try it okay so if you remember control e shift control e or you can debug control e there all right so you can call this whole thing here all right so but then i want to debug it i want to debug it um So if I just put a debug here, system dot debug, and then you you put um, contacts. So if we do that, I just want to see how many contacts are created, all right? Because this is not a test class. You can't actually run a test on here. So we're actually going to execute this 
this um, task data factory. So I'm going to take this out. All right. So I am going to say random contact factory dot generate random contacts. This is not required. You don't have to do this to pass the challenge. I just want to show you, okay, number of contacts, say three contacts. Last, last name is Jones, okay? So test one, Jones, test two, Jones, test three, Jones. And then you do that. Don't forget the semicolon. And then you open the log and you execute. It should create three contacts. So if I check on debug only, there, we have three contacts. First name, test zero, last name, Jones. Test one, Jones. Test two, Jones. So it's doing what we expected it to do, right? But because this has no add is test annotation, both on the class or the method, we can't run a test on it. So you can only um, do the anonymous execution there, all right? So that concludes our challenge. We should get the 500 points. And I will see you on the next video. And I will flip back here so you can see how it's constructed. You can pause the video and start writing it, but you have to understand the whole thing. Okay, not just copy it. Understand it and then do it. Okay, you can even play around with it. Do it a different way. Boom! We got a new badge, a new shining badge. What is this, a bug? We just squish a bug. Good job, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. And do yourself a favor. Like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word. Watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.